Hey guys, you may have been waiting on this for a while. This is the Armasite Spark Core. Right now I have it mounted to my Ballistics Helmet Company. Ballistics Helmet, it is a ballistic helmet if the name didn't give that away for you already. I don't really have my setup fully set up. You know, I need some weights and stuff in the back. Uh, and I need to kind of adjust this a little bit to really get it working quite right for me. But I figured I would show you the setup I have going, kind of janky, not quite all set up. But this is it. So this company, Ballistic Helmet Company, sent me this helmet, Ballistic Helmet, uh, a while back. And I just haven't, haven't gotten around to reviewing it yet because it's not an item that I really use uh, ever. It's kind of more of an SHTF item for me. But it's an affordable Ballistic Helmet. If you are in the market, I'll link to that. Below in the description, mounted to it is an Inforce uh, WML Lite. Uh, this is an older model. I reached out to them to see if they would send me one and they never replied to me. So if any of you work at Inforce, I'm looking for a light. Uh, this is one that I borrowed from my friend to use to help review the Armasite Spark Core. The Spark Core was provided to me by Optics Planet. So big thanks to them for continuing to support this channel and all the relevant links for this stuff will be in the video description below. So here we have it. This is the Armasite Spark Core. It is considered a Gen 1 Plus night vision device, uh, which really means it falls into the category of Gen 1, but it has some features that kind of help it bridge the gap between a Gen 1 and a Gen 2 device. Now, if you're brand new to this and don't know anything, Gen 1 is typically the cheapest, Gen 2 is more expensive, Gen 3 is the most expensive currently. Well, there's probably more expensive stuff, but for all intents and purposes, Gen 3 is the most expensive model and works the best, is the most robust. So Gen 1 devices range anywhere from a couple hundred up to, you know, five or six hundred bucks for one. Uh, this is on the higher end of the Gen 1 spectrum in price, but it is at the highest end of Gen 1 spectrum in performance. So I'll get into a little bit about like what sets it apart from some other Gen 1 devices, but first let's just kind of talk about some of the features, the size, etc. So here it is, and it doesn't really necessarily have a top or a bottom. It can be flipped around any way, and the eyepiece can rotate and turn to support it. But we'll just go ahead and say this is the this is right setup for now because we have the switch, the control switch essentially. So there are three modes: off, on, and IR. So IR means that it is on with a little IR light in the front here. So it'll glow like a little bit red and that will help illuminate it. So runs off of a single CR123 battery. It's in this little compartment. I don't really take it off because it's a lot of screws, but single CR123 right in there. And it has some options. When you first get it, it'll probably be way out of focus like it was for me but this ring will help focus it as well as this ring. So a combination of these two rings will help get you in focus where you wanna be. Now it has some rails on it as well, so you can mount it to your different devices. And yeah, it's not like a standard Picatinny rail, but I think it is a standard, you know, whatever whatever rail this is. And I'm not, a, I'm not that well versed in night vision, so this stuff is kind of new to me. I've played with some friends. I have a lot of friends with cool guy gear, but I have never myself owned one. So that's basically the, the device. So what separates the Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3 uh, devices for what most people care about is price, price point. So Gen 1 is going to be the cheapest, Gen 3 is the most expensive, but also obviously performance. So essentially how these work is they magnify uh, amplify whatever available light so no night vision will work in absolute total pitch black darkness they need some kind of ambient light or IR infrared light if they want to function unlike something like a thermal device which just uses heat signatures they work in absolute dark or in the light so these work in pretty dark environments and if you have an illuminator then they'll work in pitch black. So really the, the functional difference for, you know, between a Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3 is that a Gen 2 and Gen 3 device will work better. You'll be able to see more uh, with less light and you'll be able to see it more clearly. So if you go out on a really dark night, a Gen 1 basically won't see anything without an illuminator, whereas you have a Gen 2 or a Gen 3, they'll see more. Now, when you put an illuminator into play something like sorry let me grab this off here oh did i screw it down i did so 
we get something like a light, we'll just use this. There's a lot of different illuminators out there. This is a Inforce and it has regular white light and it has infrared light depending on where this switch is. So infrared light plus a Gen 1 device, depending on how powerful your light is, will illuminate quite a bit and you will be able to see quite a bit at night with even a Gen 1 device. This Gen 1 device is really clear so it works really well with an illuminator. Without an illuminator, I won't say it's completely worthless, but it isn't that great. And that's gonna that's, that's the same for every Gen 1 device. So for a Gen 1 device, if you really plan on getting your maximum use out of it, this illuminator will work well for a close, close range, you know, within 15, 20 yards maybe. And something like this or something brighter will help you see out even further, 50, 100 yards or so. Uh, so really a Gen 1 device kind of needs to be paired with an IR illuminator if you want to get the most most effect effectiveness out of it. Now if you get a Gen 3 device, also same deal. They will work better with an illuminator, but don't require an illuminator as as much as a Gen 1 device. Uh, they'll both work with IR lasers and all that stuff. So like I said, this is the Armasite Spark Core. Core, C-O-R-E, stands for Ceramic Optical Rug Ruggedized Engine which means that basically this is made out of a different material. Most of the uh, tubes are made out of glass for the Gen 1s. This is made out of a, let me read it here because I don't want to butcher it, specially formulated ceramic compound fused with metal alloys, similar to those used in Gen 2 and Gen 3 devices. So that's what I say, that's when early I mentioned that it kind of bridged the gap between Gen 2, Gen 1 and Gen 2 device. That was what I was talking about. It does not use a micro channel plate, so by definition it is a Gen 1 device. So by using that ceramic blend type material or whatever, uh, instead of glass, it makes it both more rugged and durable uh, and also increases the resolution. Uh, some further advances remove edge distortion and increase photosensitivity. So some advances in here over a traditional Gen 1 make it a little bit better. And those that's kind of technical lingo jargon that I don't fully understand either. I mean, I obviously understand that different materials uh, will yield different results, but the, the technological differences between a Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3, I, you know, I'm not that versed on. So you can hate on me or dislike the video if that offends you, but I'm just trying to be real and honest. Unfortunately, I won't have a ton of good video for you because it is pretty difficult. It's not like the thermal device that you can just hit uh, record on the button and record it. There's nothing like that baked in. Uh, it's... I know they sell like a camera camcorder adapter for it, but I do not own that. So the, the footage you see or maybe have seen if I've shown any is just kind of me putting a camera behind the lens looking through it. And that's kind of ghetto and kind of janky, but uh, that's kind of all I could give you. So I apologize for that. And yeah, it's a relatively lightweight device. It's not super big and bulky. You can use it handheld, which is probably, probably its primary use for people, or you can mount it obviously with any of the three rails. Um, its body is made out of kind of a composite plastic material and metal in some places as well. So it seems pretty burly, though I haven't really tossed this thing around downstairs or anything like that. It does come with this cap. The funny thing is uh, when I first got this, I had the cap on, I had the cap on it and I took it off. I didn't like take it off in the in the light because you're not really supposed to expose them to like super bright lights, which is what I'm kind of doing right now. But I had the cap off when I was kind of using it and I put the cap back on and then my friend who's like this FBI SWAT guy you know he uses he uses this kind of high-tech stuff all the time he the cap was still on and he put up put it up to his eye and he was looking through it and in my head I didn't say it in my head I was thinking you noob the cap's still on what are you doing uh, but I was actually the noob because there's this little hole in here so with the cap on it still works so the hole is just so it doesn't get too much light in and fry anything in here uh, in brighter light but it still functions with the cap on. So don't be a noob like me and just know that you can run it with the cap on if you want to as well. So yeah, just note that you can use it with the cap on, though I'm sure for best results in darker environments, taking the cap off will allow it to get its maximum kind of light sensitivity going. So yeah, guys, as always, uh, links to these products are in the video description below. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments section. If you liked this video, found it helpful at all, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, you can thumbs down it if you would like. Uh, and then here's kind of a size comparison to the Fleur, Fleur Scout TK. Here is a Glock 17 mag for reference. 
All right, guys. Take care.